Meditation is easier than you think. That's Yangji Minghor Rinpoche. He's sort of a big deal in the world of meditation. So we should take what he says seriously. Meditation is easier than you think. And it's true, meditation is pretty simple. But for the last 10 years, as I've built this meditation practice, I felt like I was fighting with myself, at least in the beginning, to solidify this practice. And it wasn't until after the first two years where I thought I had this routine down to a science. This doesn't mean that you're gonna struggle with meditation for the first two years, because this is what I figured out. No matter what type of meditation you're trying to get into, whether it's breath awareness meditation, whether it's Zen meditation or body scan awareness meditation, no matter what type of meditation it is, we're ultimately trying to achieve the same emotion. That's mental peace. And what's standing between you and that emotion is ultimately your perception of how mental peace should look like. And that's what we need to deconstruct first. Wait, did I send that email? What's for dinner today? Crap, I don't have any groceries. Okay, Herschel, you're meditating. Let's focus on that for now. Wait, I didn't pay my bill. On an average day, we have about 50,000 thoughts that go through our head. And we don't realize that we're having all these thoughts, mainly because throughout our day to day, we're super busy or we just keep ourselves distracted. That's why sitting down to meditate for the first time can be so challenging. And this is the first time we're actually sitting down and being with our thoughts, which we rarely do. And not only that, when you finally sit down, close your eyes and are expecting to decompress and relax, it almost feels like all these thoughts are hitting you at the same time. At this time, you might have this burning sensation or this discomfort of anger or just frustration. And at that time, you might just tell yourself, I'm just bad at meditation, which is not true. Not only that, but telling yourself that having thoughts through meditation is perfectly normal and everyone experiences it. And also recognizing that having thoughts through meditation doesn't mean that you're not cultivating mindfulness. It's actually the opposite. Every time you have a thought that pops up, instead of pushing it away quickly, appreciate that you're recognizing this thought then gently push it away, and then go back to your meditation. See, this is what meditation is, which is essentially recognizing you're having a thought, realizing it, letting it go, and then slowly drifting yourself back into this meditation practice. And this can also help when you're focusing on your breath or you're using meditation beads like I do. As of 2018, 14% of people have reported that they've meditated in the past 12 months. Which means if you're trying to get into meditation, you're in the minority. Which means you're gonna get a lot of distractions. Being the only one in my family and in my friend group who has a consistent daily meditation practice, distractions were one of those things that early on were the biggest factors of me wanting to quit. And when you're in that environment filled with distractions, your mind is zipping through these thoughts like, no one gets me, I never get the peace and quiet I need. How am I supposed to meditate with all these annoying distractions? But here's the thing, recognizing that you are experiencing distractions is meditation. I know, at first it sounds like a gimmick, and I thought that too when I first started. But here's the thing, meditation is designed for you to recognize your surroundings. So once you understand that, you start to build this empathy and patience towards these distractions that you're having. So every time you get distracted by a phone going off or sirens or someone walking in, instead of getting angry, you're building this strong sense of knowing that A, a distraction has happened, and B, this distraction will alter my headspace. This is a great skill to cultivate because in our lives, we're filled with distractions. So in our personal personal life or professional life, we're just constantly bombarded with things that are happening around us. And this is a great way of building empathy and understanding. And once you have this understanding and this new skill, you're just going to be more of a badass person around your friends and family because you're more empathetic and more calming and more patient on things that other people might just kind of go off and be angry about, which isn't bad. So here's the thing. Not every single day is gonna be a good meditation. In fact, you might go a whole week with bad meditation sessions. There might be moments where you just tell yourself, this isn't working, I should quit. But I look at meditation as like the analogy of an ice cube, right? The moment you take it out of the fridge, it's not gonna start melting until it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But that doesn't mean that nothing's happening from zero degrees Fahrenheit to 31 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, the molecules inside are changing and being altered. You just don't see what's actually happening until it hits 32. 
degrees Fahrenheit. And the same concept applies to meditation. Even if you've had consecutive bad meditations, the fact that you're just showing up, sitting down, closing your eyes, and doing breath work, or whatever meditation you take on, these are keystone habits. And just the fact that you're showing up and doing this practice and building these habits is what's ultimately gonna make you incredibly successful down the road. You might not see physically on the outer surface that this is working for you in the beginning and you're gonna have bad days, but if you can recognize that you're building these habits, ultimately it's going to happen and you're gonna be more appreciative of the fact that you stuck with it. For the past 10 years, these have been my three biggest lessons on meditation, but there's a fourth lesson as well. That is, there's no end goal. There's no end game to this idea of meditation and this practice. The essence of meditation is awareness. Awareness meaning knows what you are thinking, what you are feeling, what we are doing, that is awareness. Ultimately, our goal is to build awareness. And until we don't stop thinking or have these thoughts in our heads, which won't happen until we die, meditation is just gonna be with us until the very end. The fastest way to fail at meditation is having this idea that you want to be enlightened. I know where to go. The more you focus on that, the more likely you're going to fail at it. But if you focus on baby steps, if you focus on different forms of meditation, because meditation can come in forms of reading a book, or drawing, or writing, or going out a walk. If you can focus on those things, meditation is going to be an incredibly good way for you to sharpen your awareness every single day. All you need to remember is that there's no final destination with meditation. Meditation is just simply there for you to just be there. But that's as simple as it is. I think meditation can be really spun into this really complex thing, but it isn't. It's ultimately just being with their thoughts and understanding what's going on in our surroundings. In a world where technology is being pushed down our throats and being connected constantly 100% of the time is now applauded and is the norm, meditation is simply just telling ourselves, hey, I'm gonna disconnect for a little bit and I'm gonna be with my thoughts and understand what I'm thinking. Try it, just feels good.